Hey guys, Justin here. Quick note, everything with the times may not be exact because we're doing this all in hosted sessions of the day before because I am not available to do this race uh, today on Monday. So take everything with a grain of salt, but all the ideas and all of the lines are gonna be really good to take for the actual race. But other than that, if you like the video, leaving a like on the video would help me out more than anything else. And I would really appreciate if you would do that. And besides that, let's get right to the lap. It's going to be top line all race. Now, I really hope that this isn't just the track state messing things up, but I think this is pretty darn equal to what we should be expecting for track state. Did you set up the host? Yeah, I've set it up based off the schedule. I didn't change anything. Oh, uh, you just ran an 057 Highline Highline? All right, let's take a look at that. So once again, I want to say that this time is not going to be exact uh, what you should expect. It might be a little bit too fast. It might be a little bit too slow because we did this in a hosted session where I made it off the schedule, so it should be close. But if this feels unreachable, then I think that that might be why. But I, I do think that this is the uh, line that you want to approach at the very least. So we're going to do our run up. On the first lap, we took one and two very, very easy to preserve some tires. There's no reason to go through one and two hard if you can just build up the momentum here, three and four. So I just went through, lost like a four tenths in one and two, and then made sure to build up some momentum around the top in three and four. Okay, so you're gonna wanna cut the apron both times here. Uh, it's just too much time to gain by cutting to be worth the, uh, the loss in speed from coming back up on the track here, you gain about three hundredths, actually probably more than that. So here, what I'm gonna do here is, you can go about this two ways. You can be really balls to the wall and enter along the top seam and really, really make sure not to slide up an inch. Or you can do what I did in this lap and enter on the second seam and give yourself a little more buffer room to slide up. Now the top top with the top seam here, that's going to be optimally the best, but also the most risky. So I went a little bit, I went a little bit in between and you really don't get out of the throttle much here. So you see, I get out of the throttle to about half until I feel the car start to hook. Now what I'm looking for with that is I kind of probe the throttle higher and higher from this position and see if it's sliding up or not. And if it's not sliding up directly after I, I probe the throttle, then we're good to get back full on the throttle. And you see here, I still get a little tight. And this is actually a little, a little bit of lost time because of how much wheel I had to input in there. But because we carried so much center speed from where we picked up the throttle, it didn't matter too much. But there is room for improvement on there if I can get that without the tight condition. And you can see the wheel is moving back, back, back. And this is kind of a preview of why this may not be the best line for long run. So anyways, we carry really good momentum off of one and two. And now you can go either top of one and three and four or bottom of three and four. It really, both of them almost even out. I know uh, Parker White said that he thinks bottom is a little quicker but I think it's just a little more consistent to run the top here. And I actually run this a little closer to the wall even because that's how confident I am with it. But if you're gonna go to the bottom, the difference is you're gonna let out more and let the car make its way to the bottom with a big arc and pick up the throttle as early as possible. But with the top here, 
I back out to half and almost get back in instantly, at least to three quarters, if not trying to stab it. So you see there was a bump right there. Ready, big bump, there it is. And that's what the issue is with running the top in three and four in the race. But in qualifying, tires are new enough that you can just power through that bump. Make sure that you're not sliding up to the wall or else that bump is gonna make that sliding up to the wall condition worse. So you gotta make sure that you're either driving down the hill or really, really straight in your line so that when you hit the bump, you hit it at an angle where it doesn't fling you into the wall. And then because of that, I ran really close to the wall for that entire corner. So I was able to carry extra momentum off the corner, dive all the way to the yellow as long as you can. And then that's how we got that lap. So this is going to be very different to race line, at least uh, partially through it. So really, this is just a qualifying line. I do not recommend this three and four line in the race because it's really bad on tires. But other than that, uh, we will go to the race now that we did a hosted session instead of an official race because I won't be here for the official race. So we did this a little bit ahead of time. If you want to sign up for the next one, be sure to look out on the Discord. We might be start doing these every single race next season. So be on the lookout and we'll go look at the race. All right, so we just ran our practice race and it was very interesting. This went a lot different line-wise than we expected. Now, uh, we had Parker and Derek in here to kind of show us what to do, which was nice Nice to always have two extremely high-level people see what they do. But we started second here. So, off the rip, you're going to notice that high line is going to be very dominant for the first little bit of the race. And you can see I really, I really test the limits of the high line. And actually, I used that to drive by Derek eventually after a few laps here. Just the high line is just so much better than the low line, especially in 1 and 2. Now, I, I, we were doing this on purpose. So Derek was testing bottom the whole time. I was testing top the whole time. And Parker was taught testing uh, high in 1 and 2, low in 3 and 4. So 1 and 2 gains an absolutely massive advantage uh, over the short run if you run the top. But three and four really didn't gain anything. So take a note, he was about half a car length back. I'm running this high lane. There's bumps here that really upset the car. Because of that, you can't gain your momentum. And uh, because of that, uh, he basically is even with, uh, with us the whole time here. But one and two, we just absolutely pull away. Now... I stayed a little bit too long on this experiment of top three and four as well. And I eventually started fading and I became irrelevant. I hit the wall eventually and became irrelevant. Uh, like right here, it's really easy to hit the wall. You get a little tight. So let's uh, stop worrying about me because I become irrelevant in this run. Now it's about Derek and Parker here. And what they do is really interesting. So Derek runs the bottom. Uh, the whole race never once runs the top and this is probably the most optimal way to run but you, you lose that track position on the short run to where you probably want to mix in some top of one and twos on the short run meanwhile parker was experimenting with top of one and two and bottom of three and four which was extremely good short run but it uh lacked uh, a little bit of pace on the long run and Maybe they were just screwing around a little bit, but I came to the, we came to the conclusion that you save the most tires running the bottom the whole time because the car stays loose on the bottom, and that's like the absolute goal, is to keep your car on the bottom but also loose. So you see Derek here, he's putting on the right rear. How can you tell he's putting on the right rear? Because he gets that initial turn into the corner, and even before he hits apex, he starts correcting back to the right. That's how you know that he's keeping it on the right rear and loose. So, we go all the way to about halfway into the race, about lap 20-ish, and you're gonna see that uh, a little bit past halfway, uh, Parker is now given up. This is when we determined that about lap 20, the top has nothing left. There's nothing left on the top to uh, make any time up on the bottom, and you're just using up extra right front. So they both commit to bottom of both 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. 
Uh, Derek goes a little bit shallow, Parker goes a little bit wide, and that might be a little bit because of tire difference and also driving style, but both can work. The main goal is just uh, to not get tight, always keep the car loose. And so basically for the rest of the race, they run very equal lap times. Maybe Derek is a little better, but it's really hard to pass here, make a couple mistakes. But basically the moral of the story is you want to plan your race out depending on where you start. So Derek started on the front row, and he said that if he were to do this race in actuality, he would start uh, running the first couple laps up top to gain a little bit of a cushion. Uh, and then once you establish your track position up top, then you go all the way down to the bottom and run that for the rest of the race. Meanwhile, an alternate strategy that can really gain you some time off the start and then leave you in a defensive position for the rest of the race would be to run the top of one and two for the first half of the race and then always run the bottom of three and four. And then after the first half of the race, you run everything on the bottom. Uh, I do not recommend running top of three and four in any situation. Uh, it's very good if you're like defending, but in terms of just running by yourself, trying to manage tires, manage your stuff, it's, it's just not a play to run the top of three and four. But yeah, we had a lot of fun here. I might be doing these more starting next season, so be on the lookout for that. We have a lot of high-level people that you can kind of watch and learn from. All of us here are just really, really fun figuring out the track like this and a pretty big advantage if you run the Monday races to get something like this under your belt. So be on the lookout for that in the future. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you all on the track.